Well, hello, welcome. This video is about the exact date that Pub Rock started. Can you pin it down to an exact date? Let's find out. <laughs> As you may know from my previous videos, I'm not a great believer in this um, theory that it all started on a particular day, the tally pub in Kentish Town, because I think it was much more gradual. Now, Will Birch, who's written a very good book, he's a very good journalist, and he was part of it all. He was a friend of Dr. Feelgood's, helping them get work. He wrote the book, No Sleep Till Canby Island, and he was drummer with various bands. Curse Flyers was one of them. <laughs> And the records was another one. Just as a sidebar, when I was working for my friend who was a um, t-shirt magnate, ex-armed robber, we did the badges for Virgin Records. And one of the badges we did was a badge for the record. I, I remember it well, it was made out of plastic. It was a circular vinyl disc in black with the record coming off it, I think in red. But I digress, that's one thing you got to bear in mind from my videos. I tend to digress, but I also give good value. <laughs> oh God, blimey. <laughs> If you wait right till the end, I'll tell you something that you would never have known before. So stick around till the end, and while you're at it, if you like it, press the like button, subscribe. I won't say any more about that. Did you know I've got a Patreon page, by the way? Link in the description. Right, so in the book, No Sleep Till Camby Island, Will Birch says that it started on May the 3rd, 1971. That's the day pub rock was launched. That's a date, yes. That's a day when something happened which helped it all along. That was a day that Eggs Over Easy started their residency at the Tally Ho Pub. Comes a time when I'm in trouble and I need a helping hand. Which up until that point, according to legend and rumour and everybody, was completely a jazz pub. Eggs are easy, certainly weren't jazz, and they were followed by Please Make Honey. When Eggs Over Easy went on tour with them, um, I think it was John Mayle and the Blues Breakers, and they were followed by Brinsley Schwartz. And the rest, as they say, is history. Now, my contention is there was music in pubs in London going back way before that, and that maybe it was Dave Robinson, I quite admit, influential in getting things started, Di Davis and people like that, and they persuaded pubs to put bands on on a regular basis. But it's not as straightforward as people say. The places in London used to put on live music in the 1960s and even earlier. For example, the Kinks famously played at the Chris Old Arms, and there were regular venues like the Railway at Greenford, the Fishmonger's Arms at Wood Green. Most famous of all, I suppose, is the Manor House at, near Manor House Tube, Finisbury Park, run since 1963 by Ron and Nanda Leslie, who I knew from doing Tuesdays and Thursdays at the 100 Club in the 1980s. As far as I can see, no portrait of them exists online, so I've mocked up something that um, approximates my memory of them. Ron once told me that he once bought a car from one night's profit from doing that gig. That was in Finsbury Park. There was the Star Club in Croydon. I can remember Georgie Fame and Gina Washington saying they used to play there. A lot of Irish pubs had music of various kinds. And back in the 1960s, the Bonzo Dog Doodah Band, for example, who played every Sunday at the Tiger's Head in Catford, and they played at the Duragin Arms, what is it? Is that the one that was controlled by the Craze that was in East London? Like there was the Castle in Tooting used to put on gigs in the 60s, and people like Hendrix played there. So there was music in pubs. It wasn't as widespread as it was after the boom of the early 1970s. I admit that 1971, 1972, that was when it all started to happen. The first wave included places like the Nashville Rooms, the Hope and Anchor, the Red Cow, the Lord Nelson, uh, where else was that? Mainly in North London, there's a Kensington, which again was where 
the Bonzo Dog Band played in the 1960s. But, I mean, people like Bob Kerr's Whoopi Band in the 1960s played at the Gold Lion and at the Half Moon at Putney. That's before May the 3rd, 1971. The second wave in included places like the Cricketers, where I was involved, the Half Moon Putney, the Bridge House in Canning Town, the Bullengate, Kentish Town, the Dublin Castle in Camden, all places that like that. It was thriving up until, I suppose, the turn of the century. And the pandemic, the pandemic, COVID, just about killed off music in pubs. There's the odd place still going, I don't know where, because I now live in Ramsgate by the sea. And don't forget, I do have a Patreon page, so if you think these videos are worth supporting, please go over there. Even a pound a month is great, and if you can't do that or don't want to do that, that's fine. Like the video, subscribe, etc. Here's that interesting fact I told you about that you probably didn't know. When Eggs Over Easy played at the Tally Ho on that 3rd of May 1971, which probably wasn't the start of the pub rock thing, their drummer was former Animals drummer John Steele. Did you know that? Okay, well, don't have a go at me. Thank you. And I hope to see you next time. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.